Okay. We can come up with a way to reliably flatten inequality. That would be a good thing. But the empirical evidence suggests, so there's a bunch of things. It, it suggests, first of all, if you look at the, at the attempts to alleviate inequality over the last 200 years, whether there were left-wing governments in power or right-wing governments in power mm. made absolutely no difference whatsoever to the degree of inequality. The only things that have been reliably demonstrated to flatten out inequality are catastrophes, wars, revolutions, epidemics. Um, there's one other, war, revolution, epidemics. Well, it's going to be some was, kind of oh, horseman. Now, yeah, it's, that's right. It's another horseman. I can't remember which it is, but, <laughs> but the, the, price of, the price of radical... Um, Redistribution seems to it's be tremendous death. Yeah, there, and no one has come up with. Do a you think that's because of how solution? power functions? Because, like you know, in an unequal system, yeah. whilst there are many people that are suffering, there are some people that are benefiting. I'm in a tier that benefits yes. from, from the current economic situation. Um, I drive nice car. I yeah. have nice house. I go where I want. Well, let's look at that for a minute. Like. If you think about how that happened in your life, I, I bet I can tell you how it happened. Go on. Well, I mean, this isn't a personal account, but well, you, it better be. You had success. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not interested. You had success in one dimension, right? High success, but because you were successful in that dimension, all sorts of opportunities came your way. Like my suspicions are that where you're sitting now, you have more opportunities than you can deal with. Hmm, is, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There are well, opportunities. Right. Exactly. Well, there, see, this is part of what seems to drive inequality: is that as you get successful, the opportunities that come your way start to multiply and they don't multiply linearly, they multiply exponentially. And so when you start moving up, you start moving up faster and faster and faster and faster. And then you'll hit a point where you have so many opportunities that you don't even know what to do with them. And so it's a nonlinear improvement. But the, the, the downside of that is, and you might have had periods in your life where, that were like this too, where let's say you start to get depressed and then you start to drink because you're depressed. And then you start to isolate yourself because you're drinking and you're depressed. And because you're drunk and depressed, then your friends start to abandon you. And then you lose your job. It's like you're not going downhill in a straight line. You're going downhill faster and faster and faster till you fall off a cliff. And that seems to be how the world works. It's like there's a center point. It's unstable. Things improve, then they improve exponentially. And things fall, and then they fall off exponentially. And that seems to be what's driving inequality. You start to succeed. And the probability that you'll continue to succeed starts to expand. Mm. And so, and we don't know how to control that. And well, here, here's some other examples of it though, because I said you couldn't lay it at the feet of capitalism. The same thing happens to cities. A small proportion of the cities get all the people. So some cities grow like mad and others fail catastrophically like, like Detroit. It, it, it applies to the mass of stars. So there's a very few stars in the, in the Milky Way that have most of the matter. Hmm. So, it applies to the height of trees in the in the jungle. Right. It, and you think if things are apl applicable yeah. in cosmology and in biology, yeah. the way that they are, uh, uh, th their application politically and sociologically becomes less relevant because you see these phenomena as being broader well, than I don't, I don't media think, I don't think it's, right I don't think human it's, interaction. I don't medialism. think it's less relevant. I just see, I don't think the left wingers are pessimistic enough about the problem. They say inequality is a problem. It's yeah, yeah, inequality is a problem. Like it's it's a terrible problem. But then they say, well, it's probably a function of our political and economic systems and we could fix those. It's like, no, it's not a function of our political and economic systems. Or if it is, it's at such a deep level that we don't know what drives it and we certainly don't know how to control it. Like the, so, but does that not mean, Jordan, that would you then reject any attempt to alter mm. systems in favour of fairness? Because it, it seems to me that the focus is on, like, and as it would be for a clinical psychologist, mm. individual change. Now, part of my personal experience is without individual change, social change is sort of irrelevant. And many well, okay, great but, gurus but would you say... Answered, you answered it right then and there. It's yes. like, because, because I am concerned with inequality, say, and with social instability. And, I, and I've thought about it for a long time. I knew that the left-wing approaches tended to fail catastrophically. And the right wing, of course, isn't particularly concerned with inequality. So that's so the left wing fails and the right wing don't care. Yeah, that's right. That's that's fundamental. So we need to they find... also don't see the danger sufficiently. And the right wing also tends to think that the spoils go to who deserves them. Yeah, and that's kind of true. 
but it's not completely true. So that's that's part of that. No, because we're not all because of course, and what like a, a from a, a leftist perspective would be that we're not starting with yeah, from right. a level playing field. And well, and the system isn't perfect at selecting. And this is why I think a spiritual solution, uh, but something that is beneath or beyond material is the only way that true progress is likely to be achieved. I was thinking of this something that you said before about I mean, we were talking briefly about kindness and compassion and it occurs to me and this is I'm sure very simplistic but the heroism itself uh, by which I mean sacrifice mm -hmm. the willingness to sacrifice yourself for a greater idea. Uh, what excites me about that idea and I, and I believe why the phenomena is so loaded is if someone is willing to die for something it's that they believe it's bigger than them or in fact that themselves, their self is not the truest thing, that there is something greater. If I would give my life for another person, it's almost an acknowledgement of oneness, mm -hmm. the temporalness of the individuated self. Mm -hmm. And we all work so hard to achieve individuation and I'm sure much of your work as a clinical psychologist is guiding people towards it. But mm -hmm. for me, it is just a, a, a temporary resting place because having had the kind of experiences of personal humiliation, annihilation, success, failure, decimation, like, you know, all of these things, things that what, what I've been led to and what I continue to struggle with is how do I how do I serve how am I of service well, how do I help see, people I think, I think that that's that is the solution to the problem it's like I don't think the solution to the problem of inequality is sociological I think it's psychological I mean partly what I'm trying why because to... it's closer to essence because it's more essential or because why? a society has to be a reflection of individual psyches or collective psyches why is it I think, psychological I think the temptation the temptation towards resentment and destruction that's associated with sociological approaches to inequality is too great and that as a consequence those those movements tend inexorably to become corrupt and destructive because i think orwell put his finger on it when he said the middle class socialists don't like the poor they just hate the rich mm -hmm. and that hatred i think that hatred gets the upper hand in sociological movements i think that the best approach to ameliorating inequalities to strengthen the individual. I mean, and that's, and that's what I've concentrated on doing. Like we have this program, uh, the self-authoring suite, and there's a component of that that helps people write an autobiography and another component that helps them write an analysis of their personality and another component that helps them write out a plan for the future. And we've used that, we've studied the effect of having people write out a detailed plan for their future. And, and it's a proper plan. It's like, okay, look, you. You get to have what you want three to five years down the road. You get to have the friends you want. You get to have the family you want. You get to have the career you want, the education. You get, you get to take care of yourself properly. You get to withstand the temptations of drug and alcohol abuse and other sorts of impulsive pleasures. You get to make productive and meaningful use of your time. Okay, what does that look like for you? Write it out. What does it look like? Just, you need a vision. And then you need another vision of how terrible things could be if you let all your bad habits get the upper hand. Mm. And we've had people do that in an experimental situation and mostly they were college students and the consequences of that there were two consequences one was general which was that university students were about 30 percent more likely to stay in university and got grades there were, were about 25 percent better which is a walloping effect but even more interestingly and this is the coolest thing i think that we ever discovered as in our in, in our psychological research it, we did this research in holland at the um uh, at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam, at the Rotterdam School of Management, and we ran business students through the future authoring program for multiple years, so several thousands of them. And we stratified them by gender and ethnicity. Pretty, a pretty rough cut. Men, women, and then Dutch nationals and non-Western ethnic minorities. Okay, and so the, the performance was like this. The Dutch women were at the top, then the Dutch men, then the then the non-Western ethnic minority women, then the non-Western ethnic minority men. And they were behind the Dutch women by, a, by, a, by a, they, they showed about an 80% decrement in performance. Really quite catastrophic. Two years after they did the future authoring program, they were ahead of the Dutch women. It right. just blew us away because it was, and it, it was a perfect indication of the fact that you can use a psychological intervention to ameliorate what looks like a sociological problem. And so I think the right... See, I think the right solution, and this is what I've been saying over and over in my, my lectures and in this book, 12 Rules for Life, and this is why I think it's become so popular. I said, look, you're right. You were right. You said earlier in, in the last question 
Well, you can't ignore the group classification problem. You know, there's a black experience, there's a Latino experience, there's a female experience. It's like, yeah, that's true. But you have to decide what level of analysis you're going to make primary. And I think the primary level of analysis is the individual and the psychological rather than the group and the sociological. And I think if you put the individual level first, and you, then you alluded to that, because you know, it, was, it was like an intuition that you were bringing forward, which was your intuition has been that the right level of progress is made at the level of the individual. And I think that's true. I feel that's the only level where I have personal authority. That's well, only... right. And also personal responsibility. Because here's the thing, like, here's the rule. How about this? Don't recommend any changes that you wouldn't suffer for if they failed. How's that? And that's the problem with large-scale political action. It's like, well, here's how we should change things. It's like, well, they change them as well. It fails. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt me. I'm not involved in it. It's like, you should be careful when you try to change things to make sure you suffer for your own stupidity. Uh, of course.